in order to get Pat Wilson's campaign generator, you need to go to his website. So I've provided a button there which you can click on and that'll take you there. And then once you're there, you can click on the download button. And then once it's completed downloading, you then click on that to open it. So we open the zip file and we see the contents. And what we need to do is to copy these contents into the IL2 installation directory. So you bring up that folder and we just right click and paste. Now that the file is copied, we need to open up the data folder and then look for the startup.cfg file. Once we find it, we then try and open it. But there's no default program to open this, so what you want to do is you want to select the program and then you're going to use Notepad. This will let you edit the text within the file. So then we scroll down and we look for the mission text log and we see that it says zero. The campaign generator requires that you set this value to 1, and that way your campaign will work correctly. With that completed, we can now go to the folder that contains the campaign generator. And what we'll do is we'll get the application and send it to the desktop, so that way we always have a shortcut that's easy to access. Now we have the shortcut on the desktop, so we can double click that to load the program. It's a safe program, so you can allow it to run. Because this is the first time you would have run the program, you need to tell it what planes you own before you can create a campaign. So here are all the current aircraft available in the game. If you have the premium edition, then you hit select all. Otherwise, if you have the standard edition, then you need to deselect the aircraft that you do not own. So with that done, we can click Accept, go back to the main screen, and look at some initial configuration options. On this page for user preferences, there are some basic options about sounds, mission log files, and converting a single player mission into a cooperative mission. To reduce the mission log file clutter, I prefer to set delete all mission log files to 1. Clicking on the GUI, this stands for Graphical User Interface, so this page lets us adjust the options for the interface, such as font and font size. With the initial setup done, we can now create a new campaign. So we do this by clicking on the New Campaign button, and then selecting the country by clicking on either flag. Then you can set the details of the campaign by inputting your pilot name, the date the campaign begins, your role, whether it's fighter, bomb, attack or dive bomb, your rank and the squadron that you want to fly for. With our campaign options completed, we then click on the create campaign button and then we'll be taken to the main screen of your campaign. Now before you start a mission, you want to set your configuration correctly. It's recommended that you use the simple configuration first, and then you can adjust it to either being high, low or medium for the ground and the air density. These settings determine how many units are generated in each mission. So if your computer is experiencing slowdowns during a mission, then you can lower the density accordingly. Next we'll look at advanced configuration. Although it's recommended to only use simple configuration, we'll go through these options to help if you want to tweak anything. Under campaign preferences, set the AR method to 1 if you want to use mission log files for the debrief. For the number of missions credited, having this set to 1 means that every mission you fly is equal to one mission in the campaign. If this was set to 4, then every mission you fly is equal to 4 in the campaign. If you don't want your pilot to be wounded or to never die, you can limit the maximum injury your pilot will take here. Next we'll look at flight. 
This page is about setting the parameters for your flight's formation spacing and flight planning during missions in your campaign. These distances are all in meters. The option at the bottom relates to the top aces page. Pilots that have more victories than the number in this box will be included in the top aces page. Next is mission AI. This page relates to the percentage chance of you encountering various skill levels of the AI. The higher the percentage, the more likely it is that you will encounter that particular skill level during your campaign. Next is Mission Ground Objects. This page configures the distance in meters at which ground objects are kept spawned in. The higher the values here, the more of a performance hit you will take. You can also adjust the frequency of ship and train spawns as well as the windsock placement distance here. Next is Fighter Mission Types. If you fly a fighter in the campaign, then this page controls the percentage chance you will fly a certain type of mission as allied or axis. Next is recon mission types. If you fly a bomber in the campaign, then this page controls the percentage chance you will fly a certain type of mission or if the mission itself is escorted or not. Next is aircraft numbers. This page relates to the aircraft density during a mission. Adjust the values here to control how many aircraft spawn during a mission and the parameters for flights conducted by those aircraft. Next is Mission Limits. Set Always Air Start to 1 if you want shorter missions because you will start in the air. If you set Generate Climb Waypoints to 1, then your mission will include waypoints that will lead you to gain altitude. The Squadron Search Radius relates to how the mission is created and what squadrons the generator includes in a mission. Junk Flight Distance is relative to the player. Outside this distance, generated flights will not spawn. Under Max Enemy and Friendly Planes, you can set the number of enemy and friendly planes to be spawned during a mission. Max Opposing Flights is the number of enemy flights generated that you'll come across during a mission. Max Squadron Search Radius is the distance in meters the generator will use to choose squadrons to be a part of the mission. Odds of Ace Flying is a percentage chance you will find an ace among a flight during a mission. Flight Opposition Odds is a percentage chance an enemy flight will fight you during a mission. Distance from enemy and distance from player have parameters that determine when a plane is deleted from a mission to increase performance. Set randomized planes per side to 1 so you get different planes for Allied and Axis during a mission. The flight generation boxes relate to the percentage chance a squadron will fly during your missions. Set airfield machine guns to 1 if you want airfields to use machine guns. And the last option is to set plane deletion to 1 to increase performance. This will cause the deletion of aircraft based on the distances from enemy and player boxes. If set to 0, then planes will not delete at all during a mission. Next is mission spacing. This page determines how often you will fly missions on a monthly basis. And finally, there are the weather options. This page controls what sort of weather you will experience during a mission. Here you can set turbulence, wind speed, and the percentage of various cloud coverage. Here's the main page of the campaign, and this is where you can access all the different pilots in your squadron and customize them as you want to. The profiles of the pilots are listed on the right hand side and you can click on one of the photos and that way you can customize the pilot. And this will bring us to a new page where we can view our medals, customize pilot picture and skins and look at our pilot log. The first thing we'll look at are the medals and awards. Any of those will be listed here if you earn them during the campaign. Then you can customize the photo of your pilot by clicking on it. And there's a wide selection of photos to choose from. Then down the bottom left with the aircraft photo, we can customize the skin of the aircraft that you fly. So if you have different skins available, you can select them here. Now we'll go back to the main page and we'll see the last thing, which is the pilot log. And this gets updated with your kills during the campaign. Now we're back at the main page and we'll look at how to generate a mission in the campaign. We start this by clicking on mission and that brings us to the briefing. On this page we can customize the flight plan as we see fit. So we can click and drag waypoints across the map. 
and we can also change the altitudes for each of those waypoints. So if you want to patrol at a different altitude, you can do that. Then we can also set the fuel and the time of departure as well. Now if you're a high enough rank, you can customize the pilots on the mission. We do this by double clicking on the pilot's name. You can either add more pilots or subtract pilots as you see fit. Plus you can also customize the aircraft type being used for the mission if the squadron has more than one available. Once you're satisfied with all the assignments, you can click on finished. Now if you don't want to fly this mission, you hit scrub mission and a new one will be made. And if you want to reset it back to the default, you hit reset. I'm going to fly this mission though, so I hit accept. And then we can minimize the generator and then open the game. Take you to the mission and you fly. Once the mission is complete, you finish the mission and then you hold tab from the game to the mission generator. From here, we go back to campaign. With the mission complete and you're loaded back to the campaign, you click on combat report. And in this screen, you need to submit the claims for the mission. So keep track of the aircraft you shoot down, because when you get to this screen, you need to note the types and the number of which you shot down. When you're done with your report, you submit it, and then you're taken to the debrief screen. By clicking on Start Debrief, it goes through the mission in sequence as to all the events that happened. And you can go forward and back in the steps by clicking Next or Previous Event. The full listing of events can be found on the left side of the screen. And when you're done with the debrief, click on Debrief Completed. And then you'll be taken to the screen that shows a summary of the mission in total. So we can see the number of victories that have been awarded. And there's also a section for a narrative. So if you wanted to write your own personal story about what took place during the mission, then this is where you would write it. This last section is the squadron log. This gives you details about the important events that happened during a mission. When you complete it with the debrief, hit finish reading, and you're taken back to the main page. From this main page of the campaign, we access all the features available. First of which is the pilots. Now this just brings up the pilot chalkboard that you see here. Next is the top aces screen. So any pilots in your squadron that are aces will be listed here. You can also request a transfer. So here you can request a different role and a different squadron. That way you can experience something different during your campaign. If you want, you can also request leave for your pilot. In which case you put in a number of weeks that you want to take off. The next option is to look at your journal. And this is where you see your current missions and their victories as well as the narratives involved. After that you have the squadron log and this contains the details of the squadron's activities. After that you have the intelligence page. And on this page we can see various details about enemy and friendly squadrons as well as enemy and friendly key personnel. The last page we look at is the Intel map. And this gives you an overlay of the area and what squadrons are involved and where. Your squadron is the pink dot, and if you hold your mouse over the other dots, that'll detail what squadron is at that location. When you're done looking at the Intel map, you click Finished, and you go back to the main screen. The last thing to talk about is what to do if you want to delete a campaign. 
In order to do this, you need to go to the Boss Campaigns folder and then find the name of the campaign that you want to delete and then delete that folder. That completes the video about Pat Wilson's Campaign Generator. So I hope it's helped you get started with your own campaign.